Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and watchOS 9.1 RC or Release Candidate released to developers and public beta testers yesterday. RC, Release Candidate, means it's the final version released to developers and testers before it's released to the public. If there's no issues with it, it will be the same version. So that's available now if you're on the beta program. And this came out at 204 megabytes as far as its overall size. That's a fairly small update on the Apple Watch Ultra and should be about the same size on any device you're updating. However, when the final version comes out, it could be around that size, maybe a little bit larger. It just depends which version you're actually upgrading from. Now, if you're a beta tester and wondering if you should remove the beta profile, I would probably hold off if you want to stay on the betas in general once the next versions come out. However, maybe there could be another release candidate. Sometimes there's an RC2 that's very rare, but if there is, you'll need that beta profile in order to install it. Otherwise, there won't be an update and you'll just have this when it finally releases. You just had it a little bit early. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then to general, then about, and the build number shows us what version this actually is. It lets you know what you're on consistently across devices. And you'll see it says version 9.120S75. So if you have that version, you know you're on the final version. Now let's talk about what's new. And the first thing they've updated is for the latest Apple Watches. So this is going to be very good for a lot of people on the latest watches, but unfortunate for those that aren't. So Apple Watch Series 8, Apple Watch SE second generation, and Apple Watch Ultra. Apple has extended the battery life during outdoor walking, running, and hiking, and it gives it the ability to reduce the frequency of checking your heart rate and GPS readings. That reduces battery usage, of course, because you're not turning on those features. So when you go in and turn it to low power mode, this also helps by bringing you up to 60 hours of battery life, according to Apple on their website. This is something they said would be coming later this year, and by reducing the frequency of checking those different features, it will actually give you even more battery life. However, I probably wouldn't turn on low power mode as it's something that turns off a ton of different features. So that's if you're maybe in an emergency situation or you can't get back to a charger in time. Otherwise, I would leave it as is and you should get even better battery life when doing those different workouts. Now the next thing has to do with music and applies to all devices. They don't specify any devices, so this has to do with music and it has to do with downloading music. You can now download over Wi-Fi and cellular without having it on a charger. So maybe you're listening to music, you're in a different album, and you want it to download while you're taking a walk or something else, you can now do that. It will use more battery, of course, as you're downloading, but once it's completed, it won't use any more. But it's nice that we have that option. I actually ran into that recently. I was taking a walk, didn't have the music I wanted, and had to wait until I got back. So it's great that they've added that. Now, they've also added something across all the different versions they released, and that is Matter support. Matter is a new standard for home devices, and that's something that's coming to iOS. It's on iOS 16.1 in all the latest versions, and this will support Matter, which is just a new standard across the industry. So not only on iPhone, but also Android and other devices as well. It's sort of standardizing something that's been a bit of a mess for quite some time. So this should standardize that and make things a little bit better that way. Hopefully we'll see many Matter accessories very soon. But either way, we should see that going forward. And the new Apple TV they announced with this as well looks to have support for Thread and Matter and those sorts of things also. So that could be a hub for those devices. Now, Apple's also fixed a bunch of bugs in these updates. So there's a few different things they've mentioned specifically. And the first one has to do with voice feedback on average pace during an outdoor run. It could be incorrect and that's something they've actually resolved. So they've fixed that. They've also fixed something with the weather. So if you use the weather app a lot, like I do, and it tells you there's a chance of rain, the estimates shown in the weather app wouldn't always match what we had on the iPhone. That's actually been resolved in this update. So now it will be more accurate and match everything altogether. And that has to do with hourly weather as well. So hourly weather complications, again, may label the time differently as AM during PM hours. That's something they've fixed in this update. They've also fixed an issue with strength training workouts. So if I hit the action button here, 
go into my workouts. If you're using strength training, sometimes the time duration displayed wouldn't advance for some users. So that's something they've resolved. And they've also fixed an issue with voiceover where it may not announce app names prior to reading notifications if you receive multiple notifications. So if you had a bunch of things come in, maybe one from messages, and then you had a notification from another app, WhatsApp or something else, it wouldn't tell you where it was actually located. That's been updated with 9.1. So all of those things have been fixed. There'll also be security updates. So if we go to Apple's security website, on their security website, if you scroll down, when this releases to the public, you'll see this updated. They don't update this until the public release telling us what's actually in it as far as security updates. This will be true for iOS 16.1 and everything else released on that same day. And the day that Apple's releasing this is this coming Monday. So Apple said they're going to release Mac OS Ventura and also iPad OS 16.1 on Monday. And usually when they do that, that means iOS 16.1, watch OS 9.1, and then also TV OS and HomePod OS updates as well. Expect those on Monday, the 24th, usually around 1 PM Eastern time or 10 AM Pacific time, or that's usually when they release it. They could be a little bit later, could be a little bit earlier, but it should be on Monday. And of course, I'll have updates on those when they're released to the public. As far as overall performance, performance has been pretty good throughout the betas, at least for me. On the Apple Watch Ultra, it's nice and fast, opening different apps that I'm not in regularly. So if we go into the Compass, I haven't opened that in a while, opens right up. If we go into different apps, whether that be the camera remote, it opens up the camera on the iPhone. Everything seems to be nice and fast, as you would expect on the latest watch, but I didn't notice a difference on the older watches either. The Series 7 basically has the same chip. Things are nice and fast. Whether you're going into your control center, going into your apps, we'll go into alarms here. You'll see everything's nice and quick on older devices as well. Of course, any supported device for watchOS 9.1 should have pretty good performance overall. And of course, battery life should be increased in this update, especially if you're using it during a workout or a walk or something like that. So far, since I've taken it off the charger this morning, we're at 96% with the screen on the entire time of this video, and since probably 9 a.m. this morning. So it's doing pretty well, it's easily lasting me through a day, and I really wouldn't worry too much about it. As far as anything else, well, that's pretty much everything in watchOS 9.1, not a ton of updates. And for those of you wondering what watch face this is, many of you ask, I have gone back and forth between this and the standard one on the watch ultra, but this is modular. And as you can see here, if I hit edit, there's modular. And if I go over to the complications, there we go. You'll see in the middle, I have an app called Lumi. This is a paid app, but it's something I like the look of. It shows when the sunset and sunrise is, as well as golden hour for taking photos and videos. And then of course the complications, I just have weather, the compass and music, and then messages in the upper left with the date and time in the upper right. So that's all this is for those of you that were wondering. Now, if you've found anything else in watchOS 9.1 RC, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.